container barn. Hey, uh, welcome back to the shop. Today I want to share with something I've sort of been holding back. I didn't want folks out there to get too jealous. And of course, what I'm talking about is my Proline 14,000 welding table. If you want to be a really fantastic welder, you've got to have a top quality bit of gear like this. Now, this may not be as large as the wooden table that it's sitting on. It's definitely not as flat as the table, but it's got two really special qualities that make it ideal as a welding surface. Now, the first thing is electron cloud technology. Now, if you're a welder, you probably know what this means. What it means in lay terms is that you can put your workpiece directly on here and the electrons will flow through directly to your grounding clamp. That's really neat. Now, the second thing about this is while it may not look like much, this is actually over 3 million nanometers thick. And what that means is that this metal surface is not going to burn the same way wood will. So this allows you to do some really great fabrication. And today we're doing some fabrication because we're beginning phase two of the container barn project. We're going to be fabricating up some reclaimed barn wood and steel doors. So let's bring you in for a close up and let's get started making ourselves some really fantastic doors. Another great thing about this Proline is you can write on it directly with your soapstone. So I've got myself a drawing all worked up here. Uh, we have our internal dimensions inside of that frame that I welded in. We're going to be making two doors that swing out. Um, the top half of the door is going to be open with some cattle panel in there. The bottom half is going to be covered by some reclaimed barn wood. So we need to make four of these doors in total, two for each container. And uh, it should be pretty straightforward. Whenever I change the angle on a mitre cut, um, it's always good to check against a known good square. Um, on the topic of good squares, I've got these fireball tool squares. They're really fantastic. They're a great complement to the Proline series table. Um, and this looks pretty square, definitely within my gap filling abilities. So let's keep on going. I'm over at my Everlast Power Pro 256 SI. This is the TIG welder I've been using. And I really like this guy compared to comparable models from the Blue Company and the Red Company, because unlike those guys where you have to hunt and peck through menus to find functionality, like 99% of the functions can be accessed directly from these knobs here. That's really handy because you can have a friend over here while you're welding, adjusting pulse amps and the pulse width to get those really Instagram perfect welds. But one thing it doesn't give you direct access to is the TDPI menu, and this can trip up a lot of beginning welders. So to get into there, you hold down mode and remote, and you turn to TDPI. There we're in TDPI, and you can see that the default level is five. And that's five tungsten dips per inch. Now that's a perfectly adequate setting for a beginning welder. It gives you a really good opportunity to practice grinding those welds and get a, sorry, grinding those tungstens and getting a really fine point on those. But after a while you get pretty good at grinding tungstens and you can turn this puppy back down to zero. There you go, zero TDPI. That's really uh, helps you be a little bit more uh, production ready uh, when you're building a, a large product like this and uh, it'll help you get the job done faster and better. Quick tip. For all my uh, singing praises of the 
what I call it Proline 14,000. I've decided to start welding on the concrete ground. The Proline 14,000 is not quite large enough. It was getting a little finicky balancing these guys on cardboard boxes and bits of wood. But anyway, this should come together pretty nicely. As much fun as it's been working on the first one, I need a bit of a break. I'm a little daunted by the fact that I have to make three more of these. That's like 150 more welds. Um, I'm gonna distract myself by trying to diagnose and fix the problem I've been having with this lathe gearbox.
Hmm. Well, it seems to be working now. I'm gonna call it a day, and in the next episode, we're gonna start working on the roof, and hopefully I'll have those doors done.